Today I learned a new term, digital nomad. And I had to Google that because my name is Matteo and I don't have a top knot haircut and one of those curly mustaches. Oh look at me with my manicured beard and perfect skin. If you're also 40 and scared of young people, then a digital nomad is somebody who can work from anywhere. And thanks to this new product from Zebek, I can now put on my pork pie hat, draw on a curly mustache, snap on my braces and skinny jeans, and head out to my local internet cafe to spend 40 hours trying to think up funny funny jokes there, instead of my comfy office. Brilliant. Thanks to Zebek for sponsoring today's video and sending me their tri-screen monitor. All joking aside, this thing is absolutely awesome, and I can't believe it took this long for someone to invent it. If I had had one of these years ago, I could have actually started my YouTube channel a lot sooner, because I wouldn't have needed an office to do video editing in the first place. I have a master's degree in using Alt-Tab, but without an additional screen, I basically can't do my job. Now I've got two additional screens, and I can use them anywhere in the world. I can do this with any portable monitor. Paul Hibbert just says everything is great. Ignore him. <sighs> Shut the f up! I have a portable monitor too, and it's awesome. But there are two very significant and obvious advantages to the Zebek Tri Monitor system. First of all, there are two additional screens, not just one. This is perfect for watching Netflix whilst you're working on Photoshop. One screen for entertainment, one screen for actually doing the work, and a third screen for menus. Premiere Pro would be another great example, as it would be basically unusable for me without one monitor for menus and lumetri color, and a second monitor for the actual video output. But there are so many other possibilities for three screens, if you use a laptop on a regular basis for any activity. You could have a Skype call in one window, whilst having your presentation on the main screen, and another tool on the third. The second major advantage to this is that you can truly use it anywhere that your stupid curly moustached face can go. I'm in milk for some reason. Ooh, art. It has literally no footprint. I can use this thing on a lap tray with all three monitors. Try doing that with your portable monitor, you dingus. Do the kids still use the word dingus? I don't care, I'm 40. So that the weight isn't all on your laptop hinge, it has a little kickstand that fires out at the back. The whole thing is basically constructed of plastic and weighs just two pounds, and because it folds away so tightly, you can actually fit it in the front pocket of a laptop bag, which is mental. All of the parts of the device that sit against your monitor are either made out of rubber, or foam, or a little material strip that stretches the two components out. This is sturdy by design, and yet still incredibly lightweight. Gold star for Zebek. Zebek. It's an American company, it's probably Zebek. Of course it's Zebek, you dumb idiot Brit, not Zebek! It's Zebek, you dumb idiot Brit, idiot! And a pound is a measurement of weight, not a currency, you idiot Brit, dumb idiot Brit, idiot! The displays are 1920 by 1200, so they're basically 1080p with a slightly wider aspect ratio. This is plenty of pixels for a screen this size, and hopefully you can see that demonstrated in this footage. Both screens run at 60Hz, which is basically gaming levels of performance. No it's not you amateur! 60Hz is nothing! You're just an amateur! New character. Probably get rid of this one, it's a bit weird. You're not gonna play esports on it. But if you did, I suppose they'd be useful for periphery vision and 60 hertz should be fine for that if for some weird reason you're playing games on a laptop. The screens are LCD IPS rather than AMOLED, and this is the right choice for a product such as this because LCD IPS is more durable than AMOLED. These are portable screens, and you need them to be durable. Second of all, LCD IPS is better for reading in bright light conditions, so if you're going to be taking these things outside, it's going to be easier to read on these screens than if they were made of AMOLED design instead. 
LCD IPS also has a better viewing angle than AMOLED. So if you're in an office environment and you want to share your work with somebody, they're gonna have a better chance of seeing it in their periphery view. They do have a reflective surface rather than a matte finish, which means that you will get deeper saturation of colors and blacks, but it has the disadvantage that if you take them outside, there's a reflective surface. You might find the light bounces off them and the hinge will help with this, but it's never gonna be quite the same as having a matte finish screen. It's a toss up between what you value more, the picture quality or the ability to see outside no matter which way it's facing. We don't have a sun in the UK, so no problem there. The screens come with several cables to help you overcome the fact that your laptop is probably ancient. If you have a nice new swanky laptop like I've got, they have display ports on them that you can plug the cables into, and this is obviously the best way of doing it because they supply both power and picture to the monitors. If you have an older laptop and you've got a HDMI port, they have got you covered, but you'll need to connect power to the monitors as well, because HDMI doesn't supply power. Nisha's laptop has a USB out on it that will supply power at 5 volts, and a HDMI port, which means that I can power and supply images to one of the two screens. Unfortunately, that's all the ports she's got. I can't supply a picture to both. You might be wondering, why don't I just get a separate power supply for one of the monitors and then connect the HDMI out from Nisha's laptop into that monitor and then the USB-C port into the other monitor and have an image on both screens? That's because the industry is full of morons and they didn't make the USB-C ports all display ports. The industry kind of went, Brian, we're making a new USB standard. How can we make it as confusing as possible? That's brilliant, Dave, yeah? I've got a good idea already. What we'll do is we'll have two different USB ports that look exactly the same, but make some of them so they can communicate with displays, and some of them that can't communicate with displays. It'll be brilliant. The public won't know what's going on. Sh shall we at least make them communicate at the same transfer speed? No. And call them different things and all. Call some of them USB-C and some of them Thunderbolt 3, but make them look absolutely identical, but give them different capabilities. Some of them will have different transfer speeds, some of them will be able to send video out and some of them won't, but they'll all look identical and not have a label on them. Bloody hell, Dave, this is going to be amazing. The public will love it. The management would like to express their unreserved apologies that this sketch has been ruined by a wardrobe malfunction. Please ask for a refund when exiting the theatre. Oh, this is YouTube. Oh, in that case, tough tits. In order to find out if your laptop is actually capable of utilizing both of these displays, you're gonna have to look at the original spec for your laptop. There's no way around it. You're gonna have to Google for your model number and find out if your USB-C port is also a display port. I don't know why I attract quite so many dinguses. Is that, is that the plural of dingus? Ding guy, I don't care. But I do, and I regularly hear them say, Oh my god, Paul Hibbert just says everything is great all the time. There are two reasons you think that. The first one is, Paul Hibbert only features amazing things. Why might that be? Could it be that I don't go hunting through my inbox going, Oh, what garbage could I feature today? I feature only good things because I only pick good things. The second reason is, you're an idiot. Every single video features a section called, what is wrong with it? This is that section. The first issue then is that squeezing the monitors in and out of the housing takes a little bit more force than I might expect of a premium product. It kind of has to be shuffled in sometimes and they might get stuck and you have to kind of just wiggle them about a bit. It's not a big deal and it's clearly not doing any damage to them, but I just think as a premium product, I would expect them to just slide neatly in and out and maybe have a little catch so that you can hear a click when they go in. They don't, they just kind of squeeze in and then they're stuck by the fact that they're squeezed. And sometimes you have to kind of shuffle to get one of them in. The second thing is that although they will remember their color balance settings, if you have manually altered them, they won't remember the brightness. Every time you get them out, they will default back to their normal factory enabled brightness. You know me, don't you? Yes. Um. This is probably actually a good thing. 
You have to imagine your laptop's battery is powering these things if you don't have your power connected to your laptop. And if you've got them at like eye-watering brightness all the time, it's gonna waste your battery pretty quickly. I think they'd probably go back to their default brightness on purpose. Again, it's not a massive issue because the little rocker switch on top is actually a shortcut for the brightness settings. So if you want them at eye-watering brightness, you just have to hold it down each time. They are not cheap. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This is a premium product at a premium price tag. If you look at the footage of Nisha's laptop with these things attached, you can see the difference in the quality of the screen between Nisha's entire laptop and this little monitor. These monitors are very, very good quality and they are priced accordingly. You've also got the fact that they are a very innovative design. If you're gonna compare them to a portable laptop monitor, you're gonna say, ooh, the laptop monitor is so much cheaper. Of course it is. For one thing, it's far less quality and far less convenient. Sure, it'll fit in your laptop case and it'll cost you a whole lot less money, but that's no good if you get to the internet cafe and there's not enough room on the table. This is an innovative design with beautiful screens, and yes, it's expensive. These little babies will set you back 360 pounds plus 40 pounds for shipping, making a total of 400 pounds for a UK delivery. If you're in the US, the good news is there is free shipping and they are $499. Stop looking at me like that. I know a portable monitor, we've been through this. A portable monitor isn't as good. This is better, this is better. More expensive because better. I'm not going to argue with you, I will argue with you. I, will. I can't help, I will argue with you in the comments section. I love these monitors. They are absolutely stunning, and I wish I had them when I was younger. When me and Nisha first met, we lived in a bedroom in my mate's house. We had no space whatsoever, and if I'd had these then, I could have actually done video editing whilst sat on my bed. That's all the space I had, and it would have been perfect. Could have had as many subscribers as Smart Home Solver by now. Read. If you're interested in buying these screens, there are links in the description to where you can pick them up. You will not regret buying these screens, I promise you. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. These incredible people here are my patrons from Patreon. They are everything to me. I wouldn't still be doing this for a living if it wasn't for those people. I wouldn't have dared quit my job. I wouldn't be able to afford a lot of the things that I use to make this channel happen. Please, if you want to be one of those people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams. Come and hang out there, and we can be best friends. See you next time. I'm in milk for some reason. Ooh, art. <laughs> you damn right it's Zebek, not Zebek, you dumb idiot Brit! God damn idiot Brit with your stupid language! <laughs> Try again. Of course it's Zebek, not Zebek, you dumb idiot Brit, idiot Brit! And a pound is a unit of measurement of weight, you idiot, not a currency, you idiot Brit, idiot! Idiot Brit! <laughs> and get a picture on both of Nisha's monitors. That's because the universe... The universe? I don't remember where I was going with this. <laughs>